Hey YouTube, um, Grim Jim had previously asked for some filler videos for his YouTube channel, and I wanted to oblige him, just needed a jumping off point, and he uploaded a video called Internet Blood Sports, Just Bloomin' Ignore It, right? <clears throat> so I, I, I decided that I'm going to respond to that sentiment that he had in his video and say that there's more to it if you want to get beyond uh, the internet blood sports, right? And the first thing that's beyond just ignoring the problem is uh, recognizing that you may be a part of the problem unbeknownst to yourself. And that's because drama sells. Drama is important to every story arc, okay? Um, if you don't have drama, you don't have people's attention. And that's a very important thing here on YouTube. Uh, being boring is a cardinal sin here on YouTube, okay? <clears throat> you have to be responsible in your drama. And as such, you might want to look for situations where you can have drama and no one gets hurt. Or you can have drama, and the people who are getting hurt don't know about it because you are punching up, you know, maybe reviewing a Fox News commentator, you know, for something dumb that they said. They're never going to fucking know that you made a video about them, you know? Instead of being so fucking personal in your attacks with people. And <clears throat> another part of making the internet blood sports go away is to not treat them as if they're something innovative and new and fresh. Okay, that's one of the things, the buzz around it, like, oh my goodness, like this has never fucking happened before. This is uh, part of why it's, it's now growing in popularity versus, say, making informative videos that both entertain and don't uh, hurt people and teach uh, YouTubers who have less scruples and, and less intelligence to just mock and uh, destroy and pwn people here on the internet, right? So, uh, yeah, it really does make a difference when you, when you see that this internet blood sports thing is going to start inspiring uh, more drama and more drama and more drama. And we have lived this before, right? Part of the key to recognizing what's going on here is recognizing that there is nothing new under the sun, right? We have been here before. And some of us YouTubers who have been here for 10 years or more, <clears throat> we've evolved, okay? We're still here, and we, yeah, we see the shortcuts to getting viewers and subscribers, and we decided, ah, uh, fuck no, you know, th there's, there's a better way, you know, even if it takes longer, even if you actually have to make a good argument against what somebody else has presented, it's worth it, right? And it's worth it to vote with your attention and vote with your money and support those people who are actually feeding your mind versus feeding your bloodlust, okay? <clears throat> Internet blood sports is like junk food versus the health food that I would say Grim Jim's channel is uh, normally. So... Part of uh, the history of the internet goes as such. Prior to internet blood sports, there were other groups who did the exact fucking same thing, right? One iteration of that was actually uh, done by me, but let's go backwards in time, kind of reverse chronologically. Uh, prior to <clears throat> internet blood sports, there was uh, drunken peasants. You know, um, how they would invite a whole bunch of people on their channel that might disagree with each other. Or, uh, probably more to the formula was mo 
invite one person onto their channel that disagrees with the three of them and be able to gang up on them. That's that's key to these things, is that somebody's uh, almost guaranteed to be at a disadvantage and it's not going to be the fucking host, right? Um, <clears throat> not exactly how I would envision doing these things, but I'm, I'm more of a risk taker, you know? More, more about fairness. Um, prior to the Drunken Peasants podcast being the primary place where you would find internet blood sports, as it were, uh, you would find a group called Cable Hut. And prior to that, you would find Blue Chat, which lasted you know a good year or two there. And then prior to that, you would find Hate Club, Hate Club being something that I was actually pro the progenitor of, and I left it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> it started off as a joke between me and uh, James Pope was in on that session. And it was in the the uh, time when all that we had before Hangouts was Blog TV, Stickam, and Skype. And we were actually combining these technologies using the uh, the group call from Skype and then broadcasting it to Blog TV and then re-recording that with a different computer to post onto YouTube. That's what we had to do back in the day. You know, I feel like I'm talking about rotary telephones. But back in the day, you know, we had less technology, right? And that, that was around the uh, 2011 uh, span of time. Um, prior to that, there was actually like a gulf of not so much internet blood sports because there was rampant ponage culture, which the pinnacle of which was uh, ponage Olympics run by Richard Coughlin. And so th there was this, this little gulf of it but prior to that, there was this huge burgeoning market here on YouTube where the number one person on YouTube was not PewDiePie, you know, and he wasn't winning by a mile. Uh, back then, the king of YouTube was Renetto, and the greatest feud that happened in the first two to three years that we had here on YouTube was Psycho Hurricane Dramatube Casey Nunez versus Helion Exciter versus Renetto. And that shit was epic. All angles of it, right? Prior to YouTube, we had all sorts of uh, avenues to get our uh, blood sports that were broadcast to a large audience. And I think the greatest of which was probably uh, the Jerry Springer show. Right? But even he didn't fucking start this. You know, he didn't start the fire. Okay? It was always burning since the world's been turning. And prior to him, you know, I think uh, Phil Donahue was, was more classy about it. Uh, Montel Williams was real, real classy about it. But uh, there, 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 there comes spans of time where there's less classiness and there's more of an acceptance of giving platform to all sorts of shadiness. And I think back in that day, the lesson was learned when Geraldo Rivera, on his talk show, got a chair to the face and had his nose broken by a Ku Klux Klan member. And then that was parodied on uh, a Weird Al Yankovic movie called UHF. Okay. And that was, you know, all we had as far as uh, a medium to broadcast to people was TV and movies, and th messages moved a lot slower. You know, you, you didn't have as um, immediate of a response to people. But anyways, in order for you to see just how old this whole uh, internet blood sports, if, that, if they want to use that euphemism as the, as the new term is, I'm going to give you the trailer that James Pope produced for Hate Club, which was back in, like, 
2011. And that was the, the, the series where, uh, man, we had so many different people. Uh, we had... Brett Keane was a regular, so was Stigma Dane. We had James Pope, me, uh, Inventor Gorilla. Um, yeah, my friend Brian was there. Uh, Callens, we had Federalist Films. That guy, he's really fallen from grace, huh? Uh, the True Puka came in for a little while there. Uh, we had... It broke in, in our show when uh, it was, let's see, Lithoted Man had Evogen videos living at his place for a while, and Evogen left, and Lithoted Man was like, hey, he makes all these videos, but he, ha he doesn't even actually have a, a degree in biology. Guess what? He fucking does now. But, that being said, um, the reason why Evogen videos left suddenly from his house was actually because Lithoted Man's wife was making advances towards him, and then it came out that that was true. It was it was awesome drama, but the, the, the whole truth of it all came out because we were able to face people, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. That, was, that was the great thing about uh, learning how to use these new technologies where you can just have live streams with like tons of people on them okay we had to learn you know how much drama can you fucking take in your life before you really just have to fucking put it away because it starts hurting it starts hurting right um yeah when i started hate club i i saw it as more of like a mosh pit you know where uh Anybody who comes could just randomly get hit, and you come in order to survive it. You know, you, you jump in the mosh pit to survive it, and then when you get out, you're like, yeah, I got banged up a, a couple times, but I'm still alive, and I'm better for it, right? Uh, later iterations of it, when I left, were more of, uh, let's not go into this without having more numbers on our side than they have, you know? And that was uh, not something that set well with me. Uh, I'm not one to want, <laughs> want to protect myself like that. And so I wasn't uh, very happy with uh, the new blood that had just you know started up their own. And I, I intentionally, just like the Occupy movement, I, I was like, well, this thing should be headless. James Pope should be able to run one. Callum should be able to run one. It doesn't matter whose channel it's on, you know. Let this brand just fucking be its thing. You know, everyone could do a, a hate club. Well, that's not what's going on. Uh, and and I, I found out just with hate club that there will always be somebody who wants to profit from the drama and not be as scalded by the hot water, you know? And that's, that, that's what happened to the Hate Club. That's what happened to a lot of the different iterations since. Um, and that's what's happened with Internet Blood Sports. You see it on Tonka Saw's channel. You see it on uh, Andy Worski's uh, streams. And you know that they're not the ones that are going to get burned by this. You know, they're going to come out a little clean. And they're always going to host drama that ain't theirs. Because they want to sell you drama, drama, drama. Because they, they know that that's what you want to gobble up, but they don't want to be a part of it, necessarily. You know, oh, you know, get my hands dirty. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah. Recognizing it for what it is. Like, a long history of human beings thinking that uh, they can play with this fire and not have it ruin their communities... That's, that's what's going to help you put it away and uh, start recognizing what's actually healthier for you to consume and where you should be spending your attention, okay? That said, uh, I'm going to leave you with two videos. Uh, one is the Hate Club intro that James Pope produced, and the other one is 
uh, Helionic Cider versus Casey Nunez Drama Tube Psycho Hurricane. Okay. And uh, I think they, they, in their videos back and forth, give you enough of the context of what's going on. But uh, that's something from 2011-ish and something from 2006-ish as an internet lesson for you all as to why this internet drama shit is nothing new. It's been going on and uh, you can live without it. The, the world moves on and people mature, you know? Hold on, I got a contact request from the James Pope. Oh, oh shit, that's my nigga James. That's real, Mike. You got less than he put out. These guys are right here, right? Dude, this is like if somebody... I don't mean to be uh, rude, but... Yeah. Uh, Oh, oh shit, shit. This call. I, I've been hosting this blog TV call where we got all of the evil people that everyone hates all in one call, and everyone can join the call and scream at anyone else you want. You're in that group by association. Yeah, I'm just itching to go off on breath. Everyone hates you because of the times you defended TJ. Welcome to the call where you can scream at whoever the fuck you want. Freaking awesome idea. Yes, I right, so, the default yeah. person to hate. Because I pretty much don't get any attention. Christian inventor gorilla, and why are you asking my information? That's me. That's you. I don't want to fucking stalk you and kill you in your sleep. He loves fucking uh, Let me put it to you this way. I have a problem going into a building that the, a person will wear clothing that is more expensive than the, how much they actually put in the offering plate. Oh god, this is kind of, this is a bit too self-righteous for a guy who just threatened to shoot Brett in the head. I was just saying. <laughs> Christian, I I took a trip to Grand Junction, which means I crossed the Great Divide on the continent, and I took the opportunity to get out of my fucking truck and take a piss on a tree because I knew that on that side of Pike's Peak, eventually my piss will get into your fucking groundwater. <laughs> Brett's comfortable because he doesn't give a fuck about what Stigma Dane says because no one gives a fuck about Stigma Dane. Make your fucking dip separate from your fucking chips. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, but you don't have to if you use the oven and you don't overcook it. Mm -hmm. That's debatable. Well, that, hold on, that depends on what kind of dip you're using by a long shot. Okay, wait, y'all can't monopolize the fucking conversation with talks and dips and shit. Nobody gives a fuck about that. This is a hate <laughs> party. What the fuck? Brett, I don't, I don't get this whole, I'm just an innocent YouTuber and everybody's picking on me bullshit. Dude, why do you even fucking want that fucking persona? Be an asshole and be like, no, I don't give a fuck about it. You That's what I'm saying. You know? Seriously. Okay. Why don't you just own the fucking negative reputation you have instead of being like, I'm an innocent YouTuber, blah, 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 blah. I fucking do that shit. I mean, hell, I, I, I said rude shit to everybody up in here. Right? What are these three top three uh, links for? Who is that? That's Brett's wife. Oh, hello. Good evening. Uh, uh, whoa, wasn't expecting that. Oh, shut the hell up, you fucking high ass, fucking fake ass bitch. Uh, a fucking ugly eye. What is that? That's fucking wild <laughs> ass, fucking drawing, fucking oh. cute bastard <laughs> mouth. Bring a little, bring a little <laughs> salsa into the situation. If you can get Don Keen to, to swear like that, you've done wrong, my friend. <sighs> I now have an erection. <laughs> where the curtain's gonna be and you know and plus they start sitting on each side of the church like this group of people's pissed off this group of people and they want donuts served in a different fucking room every month you know fuck all that shit what the fuck are you talking about donuts yeah, donuts we're talking about your own little backwoods church there I mean <laughs> <laughs> and on Tuesdays they have the great donut debate and it's just uh, <laughs> Bullshit aside, when are you gonna do the music videos that you said you're rolling? You gotta shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, you're never gonna do it, are you? Nobody cares what you have to say, Brett. I don't know why you're in this call. 
That's you don't feel you have the talent, I understand. <laughs> Don't talent the fucking think or say anything logical. So shut the fuck up. Been sampling art for three months. I did the music videos. I put you in a whiny band. Get the hell on. Get the shit. Shut the fuck up. 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 Shut the <laughs> am I, am I, am I, so I'm, you're saying that I'm wrong in this interpretation of that. Go about a year and a half ago, yeah, you asked for some help from people, but not a lot of help came from atheists, and it seemed as though, through the interpretation I took of your video, that you had made the decision to abandon the atheist community and to join up with the Christian community. No, I did not say that I abandoned the atheist community. No, you didn't say you abandoned the atheist community, Mitt Romney. You didn't say that word for word. <laughs> but <laughs> you, uh, you said, you made the implication that you were not of the atheist community and that you were of the Christian community, that you had some hard thinking to do about the, uh, the uh, ideals. No, I did, not, I did not say that I was disassociating myself or getting away from atheism. I've always liked Blake and Deity. For one time, a long time ago, when I was younger, I was oh, man, what, what happened a year and a half? So what happened a year and a half? You asked for help. One of the people's passed the bell. Blah da 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 da. What am I getting wrong in that situation? What did you say? What did you say if you didn't say that? A year and a half ago, I was. If you just add Agent of Doubt to Skype, I will pull you in this call, and you can scream at whoever you hate. We're all here. Everyone that, that uh, people hate. Right, subscribe. My name is the fucking Psycho Hurricane. I want to thank the person who fucking donated this fucking site to me. Now you like going off and talking about Rob Brunetto's family and his wife and his kid? I'll tell you what, I want a piece of your ass. You tell me what state, the time and place, I'll fight you with my hands cuffed behind my back. I'm six foot six, two hundred and forty four pounds of sheer fucking anger. And I want a piece of you. You think you're psycho, you don't know what psycho is, punk. Another one, I got this big son of a bitch. Posting videos at me, this hurricane, huh? You think you're big? Yeah, well you're big, I'll grant you that. But you, you think you're tough because you're done, you kicked a couple of these, these, uh, you, you, that you threw down a couple of fights that you're paid? You want to tie your hands behind your fucking back to fight me? I only had to tie your hands behind your fucking back to fight me. Just sign the contract, big boy. That's all you got to do, okay? That's all you gotta do. Sign the contract, big boy. I'll sign it in my fucking blood. Hell ain't excited. I just got word that you want to challenge me. Well, I tell you what. You're on, Buck. You're on. When you come on here and start putting down my people, the UFC, Shoney Carter, what does this say, bitch? What does this say? It says, hey, Casey, you're on deck. That means I'm a part of the clique, bitch. Right here, I've got a contract. I'm going to mail you this contract. You're going to sign the fucking contract. I'm going to sign the contract in blood and lots of it. Yours, bitch. It's going to be a one round, five minute match because I'm only going to need about 20 seconds to waste you. Look at me, Hellion. This isn't a game. You come on here talking a whole lot of shit, pumping little bitty freaking sissy weights. Talking about Renetto's wife and kids. That's one thing. It's wrong, it's fucked up. But when you start talking about the UFC, it's personal. You know, I'm in Vegas quite often at every UFC event in Vegas. I've got a better idea. I'm going to call my friend Dana White with UFC. He's the president of UFC. How would you like to fight me in Vegas at a UFC event?
I can arrange that. Let's talk about this man, the psycho fucking hurricane, the drama tube. Yeah, you know what? This man will destroy your internet. Now, I was trying to get into the, you know, think of, you know, a suitable name for him. You know, I've used sugar tits for certain examples, you know, uh, on, on uh, Renato's videos. And, and I, I was contemplating, should I call him uh, Beefy Tits? Uh, I was going with shit for Bray Tron, but I'm going to stick with Beefy Tits, okay? But uh, his only real thing that he ever did was uh, shovel shit in the circus. And he wasn't even in a good circus. I mean, at least if he was in the Barnum and Bailey circus, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, at least that's a grade A circus, right? You know, no name. He was in some shit B minus circle, shoveling the horse shit and elephant shit. He's a New Orleans, so he's been a New Orleans police officer, a UFC fighter, a male stripper, I'm not joking, you gotta check this out, a male stripper, I've been married to about a, a famous model, uh, has all the beautiful women in the world, um, is an internet expert, and the, the list continues on and on and on and on and it goes. Um, I got this movie going on to this classic 80s because he reminds me of Sloth. Listen, listen, psycho fucking hurricane, you big ass, you big, you big bad man, you, you tough guy, you. If you, I'll tell you what, I'll send you ten dollars if you do the truffle shuffle. The truffle shuffle. Remember in the movie, the truffle shuffle. Remember? Remember the truffle shuffle? Yeah. Okay. Alien excited. I just checked out your last video, bro. You know I really prefer to just kick your ass in my hand, but you're talking about guns. Uh, I happen to have a couple myself. You can ask Rocco's house about my gun collection. I almost went to Rocco's house to fucking waste him, but now we, we are very cool. I've got plenty, 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 plenty different weapons here, but you happen to have one that you like a lot. You said you like the 12 gauge? Well, guess what? <laughs> Remington 870 Express Magnum Wow <laughs> And I'll keep my shit loaded and ready to go This is an old baseball bat that my grandfather actually uh, used when he pitched with the Yankees back in the Babe Ruth days And I like kicking ass with baseball bats I like my Remington but I'd really just love to kick your sorry ass. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this, if, I don't know if this is fucking possible, I'm gonna make you uglier than what you already are, you fucking mongoloid and retard motherfucker you. I'm gonna open a hole in your head with my fist the size of like this, okay? You're fucking done. If I were you, I'd get the fuck off of YouTube now, but you're probably too dumb not to realize that I'm really not joking. You, you, you probably, you know, you, you come down there, and I can guarantee you I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to embarrass you. I I'm very well equipped, as you can see. Okay? Very well equipped, and I can guarantee you, sir, I'm a better shot than you are. So that's, that's a 20 gauge right there. Now, and here, I'm going to pull more out of the side and get it strictly education purposes. This is a Mac 11. Okay? That's there. This is one of my favorites. I smell shit. I smell so much shit. This is a 3030 Winchester. That's one of my favorites. I'm a big buff of Westerns. Here is 357 Ruger single action. I love single action. And a 44. The Exciter comes out swinging double action. Double action. Just like the old West movies. Because I'm not all 
I'm not all my... I would check your map. That's a Smith & Wesson Colt 45. Classic. That's classic. That's classic. But I... I can't play it all. No, I think this is just... Uh, this is a Taurus 357. It's a hand cannon. This is a fucking hand cannon. Let me tell you something. This fucking gun will put a... Blow down a fucking barn door. 